Hi all, welcome to How to Be a Good Painter Part 2. So uh, we're going to have a little discussion about paints. So I'm going to take fairy elements that I mentioned in the first video and um, elaborate and then in the series of videos after it we'll be putting some of these thoughts and techniques into practice. So we'll, we'll talk about paints first. So the I kind of have a little array of the paints I tend to use for various jobs. I want to talk about why I use them and p possible applications for them that you may want to consider for your own projects. So, as you can see, there's a lot of Flejo around. So I use Flejo for the mo my main colors. I use are normally Flejo model color. These are acrylic based. Um, very easy to come by uh, online. They last for long, long periods of time. They have the eyedropper style bottle. I think these are 17 millimeter bottles. Yeah, 17 millimeter bottles. Um, and because of the eyedropper, it makes mixing paints and diluting paints quite easy. Um, very pros to these paints, very fast dry times. They normally dry to the touch within 20 minutes as long as the room is warm. Uh, can be tinned with water, though um, you could use distilled water if you wished, or even um, purpose made um, acrylic tinner if you wish, but water will work quite well with these. Um, quite easy to work with, um, very, very big range of colours. On the downside of these colours, they are fragile, so you have to keep that in mind. They can be smudged and and um, sc scratched quite easily, so you must handle with care or put down a layer of um, sealant, like a matte varnish if you will, between each layer if you want. So these are the main type colours I use. Then I have been experimenting um, with Filihio Game Colour. Again, quite similar to the model colour range, though these colours are more form formulated for wargaming. Um, though they do translate quite well over to historical or any other type of um, application you can think of. Uh, the difference with these really is is that they tend to be, firstly the pigments tend to be somewhat more richer. Obviously um, they're for fantasy or wargaming figures, so you know, for vibrance, for over kind of, it's very kind of for over being flamboyant style modeling if you will because you know like wargaming you're designed to draw as much attention so very firebrand very um, overexposing of colors which is fine like um, we'll, we'll talk about that later on so again the same pros and cons the pigment is a bit brighter so that's a good con a uh, good pro if you're trying to um, get some really rich colors um, it also tends to be a little bit tougher as well so I don't know if they put maybe a stronger binder into this. It doesn't seem to scratch as easily as model colour. And then moving on to Filejo Model Air, which um, again can be shot out of an airbrush without any tinning, but also can be brush painted. That's the real, um, I find a real pro to Filejo is that they, they paint, they brush paint on so well. And most people have brushes, not many have airbrushes because they're expensive, what have you. Um, these make for wonderful brush painting and I tend to use their metallics quite a lot. So I have model air aluminium, copper, steel, what have you. And um, the reason for it is that since they're designed for airbrushing, they are pre-tinned. So you can get very, very light layers with this. And the, the their metallics go on wonderfully. I think these are some of the best metallics on the market at the moment. Uh, things to be aware of, because they are tinned, sometimes multiple layers are required so again take your time don't overload your brush or you lose control of the pigment and the paint and go everywhere and because it's designed for airbrushing it it's fluidity if you will it will flow it, you can if you over pack your brush with this it will go everywhere so keep that in mind small amount on your brush and build it up over time it can be a bit messy otherwise but other than that really really good and then the other e big easy paint to come by most places in the world is Citadel, which um, is the, the paint series aimed for Games Workshop products. Um, pros, easy to come by, come in a rather large jar. Uh, does it tell me how much we get in it? 12 milliliters, you don't get as much as you do with the Filejo. has a big old style paint jar. That's one of the real downsides to this actually, is that it's very difficult to get 
accurate um, if you're trying to make a mixture it's very hard to get consistency when you try to go back so one of these is a must a pipette uh, very very good uh, prime colours in this range I must say so the reds their blues are really rich and I tend to use them as such that's why if you look here they're all citadels and I tend to use them for fortifying colours or uh, if I want something a bit more vibrant I'll, I'll go down the citadel route um, again it's an acrylic can be thinned with water uh, quite strong colours uh, and much thicker so you will have to thin these quite a bit um, you should always thin all your paints but these do require a bit more thinning uh, some people in especially in the gaming community have a tendency to think that these are very thick no these these are uh, these aren't even a smidgen on how thick these paints are so just keep that in mind a little cup of, a drop or two of water into your paintbrush onto your palette with the paint and you're good to go uh, they are a bit more of a robust colour though they don't dry as quick as Flejo they're about another 10-15 minutes of drying time on top of it I find okay now, now we'll move on we'll, we'll come back to these in a few moments these are my thoughts on like some auxiliary style paints that I'll come back to in a minute then we have the oil paints I mentioned these are uh, I bought these uh, in a sale got a big pack of 20 of them for like 15 euro it was a steal um, these are good especially if you're going to be doing vehicles I know this is about figure painting but you know for doing pin filters and what have you but they're also very good for doing wash effects leather effects are quite handy using your burnt um, umber and your ivory blacks and mixing them in uh, and doing wet blending which I'll talk about later when we start talking about more advanced techniques so um, not really much to say about these they're good colours I don't tend to use them too much on my figures um, only if I'm trying to experiment um, though like I mentioned before um, I know Hamilcar did a lot of work with only using oils I believe on some of his 54mm figures so um, I'd actually uh, it'd be interesting to see what he says about using oils because he's more experienced in them so uh, so Hamilcar if you're, if you're watching this actually um, maybe if you'd like to share what even in a video or whatever what what your um, experience, um, exper experiences with oils are because uh, I think we'd all like to know because it's um, it's a quite a, it's a very different process to using acrylics and uh, so yeah so if you're if you're hearing this mate um, maybe if you drop a comment or even a quick video on this because uh, you are uh, you know you, you know your stuff when it comes to figure painting too so anyway so moving on and then I was using these for years and years these are acrylic artist colours uh, this particular is Aqua Fine from Daler and Rooney I was using these right up until quite recently I still use them from time to time for doing faces uh, I tend to use these uh, make a wash of burnt sienna for doing under uh, shading of uh, flesh tones and used to use like uh, burnt umber for doing uh, washes on equipment and things like that uh, they are good colours, they do last a quite long time, they can be mixed with water you can tin them down with water um, though whereas with an oil colour you'd have to do it in um, white spirit or turpentine uh, the only thing with these is that they tend to react a bit unusually at times sometimes you'll get like shrinking that the pigment will begin to contract on the on the figure and you lose some of it so the oils might be a better place to go for doing that but um, again I'll show you these in operation in a couple of later videos when we're doing tech guides and putting some of these uh, trains of thought into practice okay and um, the final things we'll touch on because uh, I'm running out of time on this video because I don't want them too long so we have our washes so these are Flejo washes personally I'm not a big fan of Flejo washes uh, I believe I find just making washes out of the normal colour is just as easy a bit too strong but the best washes on the market I find next to AK uh, especially the best acrylic based washes I find are the Citadel colours they can go on quite easily you can you can change the intensity of them as you wish by tinning them further just with water very very nice colours good, good coverage um, and uh, very easy to come by whereas these uh, this is uh, a grey wash from Filejo for light panzer kind of vehicles or grey vehicles it tends to um, 
the pigment tends to spot, if you will. Um, I'll show you in one of my, when we apply this on a test model, you'll get little dots where the pigment kind of like pools in areas. Um, can understand why it does that. Sometimes flail stuff has tends to be active a bit erratically, and this is one of them. Now again, this could be just a once-off with this batch of wash, but um, again, anyone who's used it before, please drop um, me a, a line in the comments and let me know how you got on with it. Uh, this is just uh, an ink. Inks are an unusual beast. You really want to thin your inks down um, going in because an ink is incredibly strong. Uh, if it came down to a choice between an acrylic wash or an ink wash, I'll always go for the acrylic. The acrylic, you have more control. If something goes wrong, it's very easy to clean up an acrylic wash, whereas an ink, it's much more stronger, and you'll probably have to strip down the model and start again. So these are elements, and also I'm going to be talking about how to do glazes, how to make your own washes, the difference between glazing, filters, wet blending, all these different um, elements of figure painting. Uh, some of it I'm not that good at, some of it I'm good enough with. So we'll, so like uh, the whole idea is that I'm just kind of trying to shed some light on various things you may want to look into for your own projects and um, little tips and tricks I've learned for certain things. So in the next video we'll be actually taking a look at making your own washes and glazes and how to apply them. And we'll also be doing like uh, a few like start to finish tutorials. So thank you for watching. I really hope this has been. Uh, even just as a, as a conversation piece, something to help you um, make the the journey into figure painting less daunting. Um, and do, by all means, go on YouTube. There's plenty of really good painters out there. There's some very good painters in our community, like Hamilcar, um, Von Kittenham, uh, Liberator240, all these really good, talented figure painters that you can learn a lot from. And I'm sure they'd be more than happy to help you if you need questions. So, you know what I mean? Like, uh, we're, we're all keen to help anyone if they have any questions, so please, well, I can only speak for myself, but I'm sure they would too. Uh, so thank you for watching, stay safe, happy modelling, and watch out for those buses. Bye-bye.